behalf of one of our political parties, but no longer. In a concerted effort to make their messages fit the medium, political parties have been doing their best to entertain as well as inform sometimes with unforeseen results. The SDP spent this morning at the High Court, successfully defending its right to use the nursery rhyme Bar Bar Black Sheep in a broadcast presented on their behalf by John Cleese tonight. Islington Council had tried to get the reference banned as a slight on their anti-racist policies. But having won the legal argument, the SDP decided to cut the reference anyway to protect the family of the child who liked to sing the song. A few years ago, such a controversy would have been impossible. But as Nick Glass reports, party political broadcasting has come a long way. I'm afraid I don't think I can show you the party political broadcast. I don't think, in fairness, that I can show you that, that section. I think the thing to do is just to um, wait for a moment, and then we'll let you see it later today. It's an extremely funny broadcast, I mean, apart from anything else. It's really, I think John Cleese acts his absolute best. A slightly breathless but amused David Owen speaking to a coterie of journalists this morning. He wasn't showing the video because at that precise moment, the action by Islington Council was being heard in the High Court. The SDP won, but still decided to remove the offending joke from tonight's broadcast. What has happened is that since Islington Council decided to bring the case to court, there's been very considerable press interest and press coverage of it. This has caused a certain amount, indeed considerable distress, to the family involved in the case. Um, and we've decided that in order not to exacerbate that um, and continue with this element in the broadcast, we are going to take it out. Well, I would say the fact that they have now withdrawn that particular part of the political broadcast shows that we were right. What we wanted, and I'm glad the case was heard in open court, was for people to know that the idea that any council is banning any nursery rhyme is a load of nonsense, is just untrue. And a party, polit a, a party political broadcast should not be used by any political party to bring out that sort of bag of tricks. Party political broadcasts have certainly changed beyond recognition over the years. In the 1945 general election, the party leaders said their pieces for the benefit of cinema audiences. Five years ago, I promised you blood, toil, tears, and sweat. And your untiring response brought us, in the end, victory over Germany. The first Tory party broadcast on television was in 1953, when the delivery wasn't that slick. Talk about slum clearance, for instance. We want to get on with that. But we can't get on with that until we have somewhere to put the people. Things have become a might more sophisticated since. A body called the Party Political Broadcasting Committee, made up of broadcasters, the BBC and the IBA, and the political parties, decides annually how much airtime the politicians get in which to sell themselves. At present, Mrs Thatcher and her Conservative chums are entitled to come into our homes and say their party political pieces five times a year. Mr Kinnock and his buddies have access to the same number of broadcasts. The two Davids have to make do with four broadcasts between them. The broadcasts go out at peak viewing, although the practice of transmitting them simultaneously on the main channels has stopped. The fear is that party politicals have about as much audience appeal as the test card. Who cares about inflation? Who cares about jobs? The last Labour Party political broadcast on ITV was preceded by the Equaliser, Edward Woodward bringing a little English decency to the Bronx it attracted an audience of over 12 million. For the Labour Party broadcast, immediately afterwards, the figure dropped to 8.5 million. 3.5 million either switched over or switched off. Some parties are now opting to use actors to keep people watching, although they're still aware people like a cuppa. I wouldn't want you to go out to make the coffee just yet, but a glance around your own home will tell you how dependent we've become on imports. You know, at this moment, Hundreds of thousands of people in this great country of ours are heading for the kitchen for a cup of tea. So, for the rest of you, here is a 40-second guide to PR. The SDP certainly feel that John Cleese does the trick for them. And even minus one joke, tonight's SDP broadcast seemed to make one SDP voter smile. Did you hear about the local council spokesman who said, we have a policy of equal opportunity for people with criminal records? <laughs> There was this local council that stopped its libraries from buying certain books. And what did they stop them buying? Fiction! <laughs>
Tonight's main news again, with Mrs. Thatcher on her way home from the Soviet Union, a first top-level verdict from a prominent member of the Central Committee. Georgi Arbatov tells Channel 4 News...